Well, I'm quite curious. Uh, when when you received the Nobel Prize, well, you received it in 2005. Um, this discovery was in uh, the 80s. Uh, and maybe not necessarily a discovery, but uh, the, the showcase of, of H. pylori's role in peptic ulcer uh, disease as well as gastritis, right? Um, it's, you know, 20 years passed by and then you got the Nobel Prize. And then at that time in the 80s, you, you, you were a person who's, you know, starting out in the industry, you hadn't had a lot of, you know, um, science research experience or, or track records uh, yet in, in, or in the early 80s, right? And then boom. So, so can you tell us a little bit about the boom and what happened in those 20 years? When you make an important discovery that's going to affect people's lives, uh, you can't just accept it or face value uh, by one investigator with a small number of patients. So although Warren and I were pretty certain that we had something important, um, it was so important that the whole world's not going to change. So the ulcer treatment business was three or four billion dollars even by the mid 80s and went up to like 10 billion dollars, 20 billion dollars, I don't know, something like that. Um, so uh, when you say something is a billion dollar business, well, a billion dollars employs 20,000 people for a year. So you start talking about you know, hundreds of thousands of people that are in that business. They're not going to suddenly change tack every three months, every time they read about a new medical discovery. They have to actually keep doing what they're doing and, and then uh, see how it develops. And so the process with a medical discovery is that uh, you can uh, study a bacteria, you can say it does this and that, it lives in the stomach, isn't that interesting? Hey, maybe it's causing some kind of disease. And so at that point, all your friends become your enemies because the thing about science that you might not realise is that as soon as you... Uh, say you've discovered something new, everybody else tries to prove that you are wrong. And if, if they can't prove that it's wrong, then maybe it's right. So that process takes, it takes a while. And unfortunately, uh, it's just that it's time consuming. It's several years out of your life to actually prove a medical discovery. And the rule is that for medicine, you have to prove that it benefits people. And so that you have to say you've got a new, new medicine. So we had a new idea. Hey, let's treat ulcers with antibiotics and kill these bacteria. So that's all very well. We could show the bacteria come and go. But did the people with ulcers feel better? And did they uh, stop taking their ulcer treatment? Were their lives changed? Did they stop having surgery for the stomach? all those kinds of things. So the, the way you do it, you've then got to uh, devise a treatment, show that it kind of works to er eradicate the bacteria. Then you have to do what's called a prospective, double blind. That means the patient and the doctor don't know what treatment they're getting, whether they're getting real or fake. So then you have placebo controlled. So when you do prospective, that means you, you plan it and then you start it, you give everybody a random number, they take this treatment or that treatment, and you see what happens over a year or two or three. And at the end of it, you undo the codes to see whether the people who got the real treatment were much healthier and much happier than the ones who got the fake treatment. Then you, so that process takes a year to plan, takes three years to do it, and a year to write it up. So there's four years that have gone by before you actually have a, a publication out of it. That's wonderful. Well, Professor, Professor Marshall, uh, it's been such a great, great honor to, uh, to spend a few minutes with you.